video, I thought we'd talk a little bit about aquascaping and go over all of the aquascapes I've ever created, what lessons they taught me about reef tank design, and what I would go back and change about them if I could. I think aquascaping is so important when you're talking about reef tank design. I mean, it is literally the foundation of what your tank is going to look like overall. So these lessons were really important for me to learn in my aquascaping journey, and I hope you find them useful too. So let's get to it. So my BioCube 29 gallon was my first ever reef tank, and I quite honestly did not really know what I was doing. And with this tank, I didn't really have many options to get super creative because I used only live rock in creating this scape. And there's not much I took away from that because I haven't really scaped just solely with live rock since. But one lesson that I did learn that was super important when creating this scape was thinking about how depth comes into play. With live rock, you really don't, I mean, you really can't get really creative with any kind of arches or anything crazy like that. I mean, maybe you could, I don't know. I wouldn't know how to do it, but you can't really get all that creative because you know, it's it's live rock. So you have to think about creative ways that you can actually escape it, you know, um, other than just creating just a mound of rock, which was never really that appealing. So I learned that to strategically place the rock in a way that created depth, I kind of implemented this in this tank. I wasn't very good at thinking about this stuff back then, mind you, but think about stuff like my background, my foreground, and how the rock would create this effect that would make my tank look way bigger than it actually is. So. That's the first time I started thinking about that kind of stuff. So it was a very important lesson for me. But one thing that I would go back and change about this aquascape is that I would definitely want to probably keep the live rock, but find a way to incorporate some dry rock too, just to add something more creative and maybe something a little bit different. I think this aquascape was just bland. It was really my first attempt at anything, so I'm not that mad about it, but um, definitely would implement some, some dry rock for some creative accents of some sort, I guess. There's not really much to say about this tank because I use live rock, but hey. My Innovative Marine 40 gallon was my second build ever, and it was my first true aquascaping attempt other than just a pile of live rock, like my BioCube, my first build. Overall, I really loved the way this aquascape turned out, but there are still some things that I would fix if I could go back in time. With this scape, one thing was that I grossly underestimated the amount of room that my corals would need to grow. I only left something like three or four inches of empty space in between the rock work and the glass, which seems like a lot, you know, like, especially when you're looking at the tank empty, you think you just have plenty of room there, but it didn't take into account the full size of full grown corals and what that would actually look like. So whenever my corals did start growing in, they were really pushed up against the glass. It really wasn't convenient when I was trying to do maintenance. I was always knocking my zoas, getting angry zoas, knocking corals off of the rock work just because it was so hard to slide in there and clean the glass, which is fun because I thought three or four inches was me actually taking in coral growth into consideration, but clearly I learned that you have to leave way more than you think and really try to picture the way the full-sized corals are going to end up looking like in certain portions of your skate. Because for example, on the left, on the pillar, Part. I could not place any corals on that pillar, like on the side of the pillar, could not place anything because there was just no space. The Zoa rocks were practically touching the glass. It was just really bad idea, bad for maintenance and just really inconvenient. So one thing I definitely learned is leave more than you think in terms of empty space, because even if your aquascape looks correctly proportioned when your tank is empty, remember, corals are gonna start growing in and it's gonna look totally different. So if I could go back in time, I would pay more attention to shadowing. I think shadowing is one of, if not the most important thing that you need to take into consideration when designing your aquascape, when building your aquascape, because shadowing, I mean, if you think about it, aquascapes are essentially a perch for your corals to sit on. And if you don't think about the way things are shadowed, you don't even know what corals you can essentially put in that area. And that's kind of what happened to me. 
So when creating the 40 gallon tank, that pillar again, what happened was the left side of that pillar, I could not place one coral back there. I mean, that was so much real estate on my aquascape that I couldn't add a thing. Just because the way the pillar was structured, it had certain overhanging ledges that created this sharp angle, first of all, which I will touch on in a second. Angles are also important, but it also created a lot of shadowing and just made it impossible really to add any corals. And that really sucked because my coral choices were so limited. And in the end, I really couldn't put much there and it just remained empty, which sucks. And touching on that angle discussion that I had going there, this tank taught me that that taking into account angles is so, so crucial because that left pillar again, I mean, it gave me so much trouble. Geez, that left pillar. <laughs> that left pillar again was angled very sharply. I mean, it was very steep. So adding any corals to kind of fill that in was very difficult just because the slope was just far too inclined to actually attach a coral and make it stick the correct way since corals tend to like to face up, you know, not sideways, at least most corals. Definitely something I would go back and fix. I would make that pillar more sloped to remove some of that shadowing and remove such a sharp angle that it had, which made it really difficult to place corals on. So with my 40 gallon, what my aquascape ended up looking like when the tank was finished, I guess, looked a bit different than the way it initially looked. So the way it initially looked, it was very flat. It had a lot of flat areas, flat edges, and that was great and all. But what happened was one day I decided to add little pieces of rubble rock that I had laying around and add them to the aquascape with super glue, just like a little add on there. And I attached it to the main arc and also on the very top of the pillar. And this allowed me to place acros at different heights and make it more visually interesting. I think a big problem was, was that it looked almost like too one dimensional in my aquascape. It was almost too flat. It was too cut and dry. You know what I mean? Adding little pieces of rubble later on, once my corals started growing in more and I could really see like the direction the tank was going, I think that made the world of a difference with this tank because the corals started having different heights being on top of a rubble piece. And that way there was no coral that was kind of hiding the one behind it. Everything was at a different perspective and it made the tank look more filled out and just more visually interesting overall. So definitely something I was really happy about. And it's a really good way to give your aquascape like a quick refresh if you're just not feeling the way it looks. Adding small pieces of rubble rock uh, with super glue to your already existing aquascape is a really good way to just change things up, make things more visually interesting and add more corals when you have no space left. So but definitely a good technique. The next aquascape that I made was was actually for the 220 gallon, but it ended up breaking when I moved this tank to my new house, kind of shortly after I had just set it up. At the time, I was really in love with it madly, but even though that wasn't a long time ago, I would still do things a lot differently looking at that scape today. What I did like about that aquascape is that I did learn my lesson from the 40 gallon and I made sure that I paid particular attention to the shadowing of the scape when I was constructing it. That was kind of my primary focus. I really wanted each coral in the tank to have the best spot in the tank. And I really paid attention to flow and how that would come into play and thought about my coral placement a lot when actually constructing it in the sense that I knew which coral was going to go where when I was building it. And overall, I was really happy, but I would still make a few changes to that aquascape. I definitely would have added more fish caves than I had um, in there at the time. And that's only because I definitely have a lot uh, bigger fish, more fish now than I did at that point. At that time, it wasn't really necessary. Every fish had its home, but um, it is something I would have had to do later down the road if I wanted to add more. But overall, it was a fairly good scape. I I think it was just really challenging because I've never aquascaped a large aquarium before, only small little guys. So I think the aquascaping techniques that you have to use when constructing it are totally different. It was very interesting trying to see how to balance these large ledges that I had going on there with just the materials that I was using. It was a bit, it was a bit interesting to say the least. I do have a video actually constructing that aquascape if you want to check it out, but it was just, it was just really challenging 
challenging for somebody who's never escaped a large tank to make an aquascape that has a lot of height to it, but also doesn't have all those kind of steep slopes that I was talking about that I didn't like with my 40 gallon tank. It was really challenging. And you can tell that I was focusing on that a lot because there really is no shadowing uh, with this aquascape. I remember focusing on making sure that the corals that were sitting on the very top ledges had enough room to really grow into colony size and still have enough water above them. What did help with when building this scape was building this kind of wooden stake that helped me when I was constructing my aquascape. That was really helpful because it's kind of hard to visualize just how tall your scape really needs to be until you like measure out your tank and see where it actually has to go up to uh, high enough to. But overall, not bad. I mean, I like that I focused on the transition between the heights more to avoid some of that shadowing. However, one thing that I did notice that this aquascape was a bit lacking was that it didn't really have that much visually interesting, I don't even know what the word is, just any kind of interest. For the most part, it was just this long ledge that drew your attention, and it was a very straight long ledge for that matter. I just think that I could have made it a little bit more interesting, like maybe making that ledge that is the primary focus, maybe making it like zigzag back and forth, I guess, because that way it would add more depth to the tank. I think this, this aquascape is really just lacking that depth and a good way to create depth is by like I said the zigzagging technique and just making sure that you have a lot of rock that's going backwards and forwards you want to utilize that back to front space of your tank as much as possible to create as much depth as possible and I just think this tank was really really lacking in that department I also would have added more rubble pieces down the road like I did with the 40 gallon I just think like this is this was a good aquascape for a base like a starting base but I just think that over time, maybe I could have improved that with little rubble pieces, make it more interesting. I don't know, it just seemed very flat. But then again, I never really had a chance to see this aquascape to fruition because it broke, unfortunately. And that is when I started this aquascape. Now my current aquascape, I took a totally different approach when creating this. I didn't think about the corals that I had existing at my, in my tank at that time. I didn't really think about much, actually. I uh, just made what I thought was beautiful, and I think that was both a good and bad technique. So I think it was a bad technique because I didn't take the corals that I already owned at that time into account when I was building the aquascape. It kind of made it so once the aquascape was in the tank and my corals were ready to go on there, I just kind of placed the corals wherever they would be happy, but I didn't really have like a designated spot that they were meant to be, if that makes sense. So that kind of resulted in me hating um, my tank a little bit because my coral layout just seemed visually off. Now I recently changed this, if you want to check out my previous video I talk about the changes I made in depth and why I made those changes to my coral layout but in essence my coral layout just didn't match my aquascape I think when I constructed this aquascape I must have had acros on my mind because this tank this I mean this aquascape was meant for acros and encrusting corals because when I set out to make something pretty I almost made this aquascape a little bit too pretty on its own in that it has little ledges and little rocks that just stick out here and there and it's very intricate in the sense that it's very kind of detailed in the little ledges that it has and it's almost on like on a ledge that is this big, this big, on this big aquascape, what are you gonna put that's gonna make that little ledge even stand out? I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is that for you to fully appreciate what I did with the aquascape, you have to kind of put stuff that doesn't shadow its structure, like acros and encrusting corals. Now, my issue is that is that I love a good mixed reef tank, and I wasn't about to give up having a mixed reef tank, and I just have big fluffy corals all in my tank right now, so I hated my, my aquascape here for a little while, while but recently I made a few changes to it where I'm finally like liking the scape and the general direction of my tank but what I would have done differently with this aquascape is to pay at least a little bit of attention to the existing corals that I own and see kind of vaguely even a, a vague idea would have been enough just to understand maybe like okay this giant hammer garden is naturally going to go here and just kind of think about that a little bit more when actually constructing it I'm really proud of it though because 
because this is what my third aquascape that I've ever made and I think like I noticed a definite improvement from my first aquascape and I'm just I just love it. I think it's starting to come around and I do a much better job with this aquascape of giving the tank more depth. I have a lot of these trailing ledges that go from back to front, trail down in different directions and just generally looks way more visually interesting than my previous aquascapes. However, what I do wish I did is that I just did more of that. I think I could have made my ledges go back even further and, but at the same time, I don't want to ever run into the same mistake I had with the 40 gallon and run out of room for my corals but still maybe maybe playing into creating more depth a little bit more also maybe making those ledges and stuff not as small because I have realized now since my tank is starting to fill up that the only way you can really see a coral like even just be able to spot it is if it's large. So right now, all of the corals in my tank, the only reason they look like, like you can actually see them when you're looking at the tank is because there are absolute massive colonies. I mean, I only have massive colonies for the most part in my tank now. So I wish the ledges and the little details of my aquascape took this into account more. It's great if I get a bunch of new frags and maybe keep everything trimmed, but it's not the kind of aquascape that doesn't require a regular trimming back of corals just because it's so kind of thin in its rock work structures if that makes sense but it's a work in progress and I am really happy with the direction that the tank is going so I can't complain however in the future I'm probably gonna come up with a lot more of why I hate this aquascape maybe hopefully not but we shall see so those are all of the lessons that I have learned in creating my what biocube 40 gallon for aquascapes now. I love aquascaping. I wish I could do more of it. Uh, it does frustrate me a lot sometimes, but do very much enjoy it. And I love analyzing my aquascape and uh, learning from my previous mistakes, I guess. Hopefully this was helpful to you guys. If you guys are looking to revamp your aquascape a little bit with little pieces of rubble, or you're looking to create a new scape completely, I hope these little tips here helped or something. Let me know in the comments what lessons you've learned from your aquascape. I'm really interested to know. Maybe I can learn a thing or two and improve with my next one.